Hey folks, welcome to another What Can Contrast Do episode. Uh, today I'm taking a look at the mighty Kraken Octus, uh, the Triton from Monster Apocalypse. And I've been answering some questions from viewers, uh, which when I posted my Facebook page about what would they like to see me do with the contrast paints, it was just like a whole like of uh, a whole lot of like questions of of you know how does it work on big things? How does it work on um, you know painting certain colors or painting certain types of miniatures? And one was about monsters. How does it look on big monsters and stuff? So I figured Kraken Octus is sitting on my paint pile and it needs to get painted. And there's a bunch of like bright colors I haven't checked out yet that I want to check out. So we're going to try out a bunch of these bright colors and see how this goes. Cause there's lots of big smooth surfaces here too, but then lots of like little details on top of it. Um, that I think this guy's a great candidate for, for painting. So let's start off with all of these little areas, these little ribbed areas. I want to try the turquoise cause I haven't tried it out yet. So it's athermatic blue. Ah, oh, that's right, it's a matter of blue. I'm gonna do purple and turquoise on this fella. So let's see how this looks. Now I've primed him with some Rust-Oleum Chalked. Uh, this is a, a, um, a, just a paint primer uh, from, I grabbed a Canadian Tire, but obviously most of you can't get a Canadian Tire. You can get at the hardware store, Home Depot, wherever. Uh, and we're gonna use that as our base coat for these colors. Oh, I like this a lot. This is cool. It's gonna look good on the fins. My plan is when I go to touch this guy up afterwards, cause I'm not just gonna use contrast paints to paint these. I'm just gonna lay down base coats with them. Um, all the ribbing here is gonna be like a bright orange, but that's gonna look really good when it's dry, I think. So I'm gonna do all the like these sort of finny bits, this color and all the bits between his arms. And I think this is gonna be ideal for making those kind of look like membranous, right? Where they look like they're a thin membrane cause it's gonna give a nice transition between the, the two, the underlying color, right? This, this gray and everything else. Now I do wanna be careful I don't get to pull too much. So I'm gonna pull some off there and just get it in. I don't want the, the skin to get too much of that blue on it. So I'm gonna paint over the skin with like a purpley magenta, I think. That's the plan. Let's just mop that up. And you can mop these up pretty well um, if they get somewhere, just with a nice big brush. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Uh, get to the back there, make sure I got all the sides, get the bottom. And I'm gonna use one of the, the sort of like uh, warm beiges, I think, for all of the like tummy bits. Cause this tummy is like a, a different color. Get some of this in between his toes. Cause he's got some webbed toes like Michael Phelps. Oh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna call my, I'm gonna call my Kraken Octus Michael. Good job, Michael. Get those gold medals, your web feet. And under here. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty excited about that. You do wanna go, especially on a big thing like this, you wanna go pretty quick because you want all this paint drying at the same rate at the same time so that it does its little magic trick and pulls apart because if, if things are drying at different times it's going to pool in funny areas right because the pigment's going to get pushed towards where the paint hasn't dried yet and creates spots there we go that's looking pretty cool get the underside of that fin yes i did let's turn around and look at the other side here uh yeah in between that arm get under here it's one of those models where I think it's gonna be, you guys might be having a hard time seeing me actually painting into it because his, like his tentacles are just all over, his Zoidberging is all over the place. He's everywhere. Uh, and the, I think that same beigey brownie color, I might use Skeleton Horde actually, it's gonna look really good on the, the suckers on all the tentacles. It's gonna make them all pop out. Get these in here. And get his other web feet. And now while I'm waiting for that to dry, one of the areas that doesn't actually border and this is another like like thing I've learned so far about this is is go and do other contrast colors where it's not bordering a currently wet contrast color. <laughs> so I can do his tummy and his tentacles and probably that submarine pretty quick while I'm waiting for these to start to dry. Now the one thing I have found with big models is I end up accidentally touching areas that are still wet as I spin them around, uh, even on this knurl because he's so big and he's he's partially metal i don't want him to fall off this thing and just go cl like clattering down so i think instead of like spinning him around a whole bunch and doing the suckers i'm actually just going to do the this little fell right here i'm going to do the um the submarine and i want to do it kind of a blue gray the griff charger was kind of cool let's try the basilicum gray 
That seems like it's going to be a good color for this. And get some of that down. What are you? In there. Oh yeah, it's going to look good. And like I said earlier, this none of this is like the final color it's going to be. I'm just using this to bang on base coats and I'm going to go back in and actually touch all this up when I'm done. And finish off like highlighting everything. Do like all the little lights on the sub, you know, write US Navy or whatever on it. Write Red October on the side or something. <laughs> and then there's all its like missile pads. Get on the inside here. Oh, this guy's huge, so he's being a pain to, to get around and actually paint. There we go. Oh no, a whole bunch fell on him. Ah, I gotta mop that up. So as I was turning him around, just gravity caused some of it to like splash off and land on his tentacle. So let's get that mopped up with a dry paintbrush. It dripped off the end of the sub. Now it's, it is nice that you can use like the capillary action of a dry paintbrush to just soak up what's there. And that shouldn't cause me any problems going forward. There'll just be a slightly darker bit there. All right, let's let the sucker dry for a minute before we move on to the next color, I think. I'm just gonna make sure that all the recesses and stuff here have paint in them. I didn't miss any areas. And we'll start popping on some purple, I think. Now we'll do the purple last. We'll start popping on some of that, uh, that color for his tummy. All right, so he's pretty much dry at this point. Um, there's a little bit of pooling around the bottom of the submarine, to, whatever, that's life. I'm just going to try and mop up some of it with my brush. But I'm happy with all the transitions, they look really good. The fins are looking really strong. There's a bit of pooling there I'm just going to mop up. But for the most part, he's looking pretty great. So, going to go on to the next color. I think it's time to tackle the purple. And we're going to try... Uh, so I'm going to try Volpulus Pink, Vol, Vol, Volupus, Vol, you, you try, I don't know. <laughs> That's the closest, um, or Magos Purple. Uh, let's do Purple, let's do Magos Purple. And that sounds like a stronger tone, I can always blend it up to pink if I add some color to it later on. Uh, and we're going to use our nice big brush here, and just start getting it everywhere. Again, this, this turquoise should be dry enough that it won't matter but I want to avoid the parts where it's still wet, so I'm just gonna let them sit. I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, I again, with these paints, I have no idea how they're gonna look until they're all the way dry. So I'm, I'm reserving all of my judgments with all of these paints uh, until I've seen them like finished matte dried on the model, because I just don't know. Like, I just don't know what the, the final result is gonna be. And uh, it, the Fen region, was it Fen region gray? Space Wolf gray was the first one that did that, where it went down and I was like, what is going on here? And then it dried and it was like, it literally looked like Space Wolf Train was done. So uh, we're gonna avoid his belly because that's all gonna be that cool beigey color to go with his tentacly suckers, his little sucker pads. Uh, and it's actually looking really good on his shoulder there because it's got some nice etched detail. I'm excited to see what that looks like when it dries. Avoid those fins for a minute too, just to make sure they're not super wet. And, oh, I made a mistake, hang on. So one of the things I'm noticing is that gravity is really pulling this paint around and causing me to get some, some, some blobbing where I don't want it. So I guess on big models like this, it's hard because you need the you need this paint to go on all at the same time and to dry at the same rate. So you, you want to get it down as fast as you can, but putting too much of it on is going to cause this pooling that makes it not look very good or go where you don't want it to go. So uh, I'm having to be judicious and slow here and just hope that the drying rate doesn't make this sort of pool and look not so great. Uh, let's get his other leg. Again, apologies that this model is huge and it's hard for you to see where I'm going. But reaching certain areas because of these stupid tentacles is being a pain. And get in there, get on his toes. And I am happy so far with what I see. Like, it's definitely, 
especially up here on like the top tentacles and stuff, it's definitely doing exactly what I hoped it would and just make that really subtle texture that's like sculpted into him, like the wrinkles and stuff kind of pop. It's doing a really good job of that. So let's get into the other one. And get this back tentacle here. But yeah, there's definitely a risk of having it pool on some of these low areas. And I don't want it to run onto these fins. This is what happened before. See, it's running down, even though I didn't, I didn't, I put barely any on here, it's running from the rest of the model down and ending up near these fins. And I kind of kind of go in and check and mop it up afterwards if I don't want it to get in there. And because of the way that the, the cuts and the fins work and the sort of like capillary draw that's pulling that pigment down it's working against me and making it go where I don't want it to go. But that's okay. We'll take our time and go slow. Watch for, watch for any runoff that we gotta go fix. And then let this dry. I'm gonna let this dry for a bit before I start doing the beiges and stuff. Cause I really want those to be clean on the suckers. I don't want them to get mixed up onto another color. And uh, I'm gonna give this purple and pink a really good chance to dry. And that should end up looking really nice. Just got to get this tentacle done and the other side tentacle done. And then I can do his head. Uh, more pooling accidents. Let's see if we can get this on his head without having it go onto those fins. It's looking pretty cool. I mean, the colors are blending together a little bit around the edges of where that stuff is. I'm not going to worry too much about these. I don't know what you'd call them. <laughs> <laughs> the, the like the like barnacles on his face. I'm just gonna let those get paint on them because I'll just go and touch this stuff up later. I am gonna try and keep his eyeball clear though because I want to use that nice Nasdrag yellow on the eyeball to give it a nice popping yellow. This is looking pretty cool. I gotta say it's certainly it's certainly doing pretty much what I thought it would do, which is give me a nice purple transition. It certainly isn't purple though. It's more like a mauve. So like think about that if you're really trying to paint something purple with this. The purple's not, because it's a big surface, the bigger the surface, the weaker the, the coverage of the pigment's gonna be when it all lands and it all dries. So it's purple, but it's a lot, it's a lot mauvier than it is like a strong lich purple or something like that. And let's get his face tentacles, because every good monster's gotta have face tentacles. That's just a law. That's the law of the, the, law of the universal sci-fi trope. And around there. I'm not sure what color I want to do his beak. I might do his beak with the, with the Black Templar, actually. And give him that creepy, like, octopus black beak. I think that's going to look really cool. Um, face tentacles just about done. Get around his eyes. And we're kind of laughing. Get in there. I mean, this is a lot of this is a lot of transition and a lot of like good like base coat blending um, for not a lot of work. Like the most, I guess the most painstaking part of this really is just making sure that it doesn't end up where you don't want it. You got to be a little bit judicious in the application and careful with how you use it. But apart from that, like th there's not a lot of sweating to get this detail down. It's pretty easy. And let's let that sucker dry. All right, let's try some skeleton horde here on the the suckers and his tentacles and see how that looks. I think this is gonna probably be the last step. Just giving his tummy that little bit of contrast he needs for his soft underbelly. And this should be dry enough on the tentacles now that it should look okay. And then, yeah, wh wherever the detail is like the, the most raised, I think is gonna be the spot where these paints really shine. This is giving some nice definition to them without being overly strong, which is good. And I'm still gonna go back and I'm gonna get some, um, I'm doing my, 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 my five paint challenge with Mike where I'm gonna get some black, white, uh, silver and gold and, uh, and give these some blends. And I'll probably use that just to highlight these suckers and stuff. Make sure it actually gets in all those recesses. I'm just gonna kind of blot it on and I'm still getting a little bit of bleed through. That's okay. It'll just tint these a little bit. He is still a fish. A little bit of purple on his underbelly is not going to be the end of the world. 
purple and turquoise. And once again, I'm trying to avoid getting it anywhere that's already got a color on it so I don't give it a stain. Goes underneath. And I think I'll actually not put this on the claws. I think I want his claws, like, like his beak, to be like that jet black weird octopus beak where it's like, how does a fish have a beak? Beaks are weird on animals that aren't birds. It just feels unnatural. But yeah, I know that's definitely gonna look, that's gonna look good when that's dry, I think. Those weird sucker tendrils. So it's definitely working okay on a big-ish miniature. Um, I think your biggest enemy here is, like I said earlier, gonna be gravity, where it's pulling the wash around while it dries and you don't really have a choice of where it ends up. Because you are supposed to use quite a bit and the less you use, the less it kind of like pools properly and gives you the desired effect of creating that contrast. So you kind of have to walk the line of, am I using too much or am I using too little? And again, that's gonna be experience. Like obviously this is my second day with these paints. So I'm not really, I'm not really as familiar and comfortable with them as I could be. But I've painted with glazes before and this is pretty standard for painting with glazes. Getting it, getting it to go in all the recesses. But then if you use too much, unfortunately you're gonna cause a mess and it's gonna get, gonna get off the chain. There's gonna be a little bit of mayhem of like trying to catch it before it dries. If you get a really big pool of it somewhere. Uh, just this one last tentacle inside. Yeah, you can even see on the bottom of the ship it's pulled. It's a little bit darker on the bottom of this ship than it is on the top. Alright. And then once this is on, I think it's just a bit of that Black Templar on the beaks and the claws. And a little bit of that Nazdreg on the eyeballs. Oh, you know what? No, we will use the bright one. We'll use the Yand and Yellow on the eyeballs, I think. I want something that's going to pop. One of those weird alien eyes. Give that a bit of that yellow. Yep, that's gonna look cool. But I mean, for the amount of time you're spending, this is certainly, this is certainly cutting a lot of corners, right? Like, this is not, this is not taking nearly as long as it would. I probably would have airbrushed this guy, so most of the the base coats would have already been on there. But this is certainly saving some time getting a bunch of like highlights and stuff done. Let's get this black done. That black Templar to give him that weird beak. We'll leave his tongue free. I'll probably come back and do the tongue turquoise, but only after all this is dry. So here's Craig Tenoctis in all of his finished glory, tentacly glory, uh, having had a good long while to dry. And um, you can see the transition between the two colors there. You can also see that on a bigger model like this, there's definitely some pooling that takes place, kind of regardless of what you do, and also bleeding between the two colors, um, just because you can't keep gravity from acting on the, uh, the contrast paint. It's gonna go where it wants to go, and you can't paint it in patches either, because if you do so, um, you're gonna get inconsistent colorization because the color is gonna be deeper in some areas and be darker in places. But as a base coat, this works just fine. I'm gonna go through uh, using my five colors, probably some beiges and black and white here and touch this guy up and finish him off and you'll be able to see him on the paint table next week. So there you go, another What Can Contrast Do.